Yo, what's good, y'all? It's your boy AJ. Welcome back. Saturday Night Frights, where we all come together as a community, watch scary horror stories, and have a good time doing it. So, make sure you grab your snacks, man. Grab your wrist crack. Grab anything to eat. Grab anything to drink. Come back to this video, and we shall start. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Why are you still sitting down, man? We go through this every time. Let's get it. Scary vacation stories too. I was vacationing in the Bahamas when I was 14 with some family friends. My friend and I were getting some henna tattoos at the hotel, and there was this guy lingering around us. Ew. But we didn't think much of it because a lot of people would stop to see what was going on. After mine was done, I told my friend and her mom I was going to go back to the room to get ready for dinner. There were two ways to the other side of the hotel, either inside through a bunch of small stores or outside along the pool. I walked through the inside and got to the elevator, where I saw the guy who had been watching us already at the elevator. Yo, off rip, dude already look creepy, man. Don't trust him, bro. That dude, there's something up with him that we don't know about. We got on together, and he gestured for me to choose my floor button first. I clicked it, but he didn't choose another floor. Alarms start going off in my head. But what Bruh. could I do? I was stuck in an elevator. Oh no! The elevator stopped on my floor and I started walking to my room. That in this hotel, a, most of the rooms faced hour. the ocean, so to the right in this hallway were just windows. I was in the very last room on that floor, and I could see the guy following me about 10 feet behind. About two doors from my room, he ran up and grabbed me. I what? kicked and screamed and he dropped onto the floor. I ran to the room and locked myself in. After talking with security and giving a description, they found the guy and found out that he had actually been following multiple younger women in the building. I knew it, bro. That dude is, so, he was up to no good from the start. Bro, if you ever uh, go through something like this on vacation, do the same thing that she did. Call security, call your parent, guardian, whoever. Get somebody to take care of that because, bro, there's a lot of people like this in the world, which is really crazy. Disturbing truth Snapchat stories animated. This happened a week ago. Up until a few days ago, I went to a small, local gym in my now previous New Jersey town called Black Bear Fitness. One day, I had the misfortune of running into some skinny, awkward, yet creepy looking kid, bro. probably 18 years old. Bro, he looked like he don't belong in the gym, bro. He didn't look like he belonged in a gym at all. I just said that! That's crazy! I had headphones in and I was doing my set when I heard him saying something to me, but it was- Bro, look at his drip, bro! That dude, he's wearing a long sleeve sweater, some freaking high water pants. And look at this, he wearing socks with no, did you take off your socks? Walk all the way over there and put the slides on or the sandals on? Bro, already a red flag, man. Muffled by the music. I was already annoyed with this kid, given that he was breaking an unwritten rule of the gym. Don't try to talk to somebody when they're doing their sets. Yo, facts, man. I took my time finishing my set, and then took my headphones out to ask if he needed something. Then, he started acting like I looked familiar, but right away I nah, knew this like, I don't was know just you. trying some pathetic attempt at making friends. I assured him I didn't, but the kid wouldn't stop talking to me. Uh, back up. I'll skip most of the conversation, but eventually he actually asked me for my Instagram and Snapchat, weirdly enough, and for whatever reason I gave them to him. Instead Why? Of just saying something like, buddy, I'm trying to work out, or I don't have social media. After I gave him my Snapchat and Instagram, however, I did kind of urge him to let me resume my workout. He finally seemed to get the message and walked away. Bro, he's Not up to no good. Not without saying bye like three times, though. That night, I got a snap on my phone saying, from Sean. I immediately sighed and said, oh no. Just wondering why the hell the kid would snap me. I opened the snap. Ugh, bro. It. Already two red flags, bro. First off, if I ever give you my Snapchat, bro, just to be nice, 
and you send me a picture looking like this, sucker, you getting them blocked. Bro, don't ever bro, if you're a dude, don't send bro, don't send another guy a picture like this, man. Bro, you look sus, man. Don't don't do that. Spread bro. A creepy weird My pose. Man. Face way too close to the camera, with his head resting in his hand and a half smile on his face. The text over the picture was "Hey" with two Y's. Mm. I muttered the words, "What the?" Oh, if you if you are uh, into stuff like that, I don't judge, but some people they don't like that. Like, don't force that on people. You know what I'm saying? Fuck. For the record, I'm a guy, which made this even more weird. You bet it did. Or My do. thought process was, I've had enough of this loser already. I'm gonna remove him and make it clear I don't want to talk if I see him at the gym again. And so I did. I removed him minutes after he sent that snap. What? I'm sure not even a minute later. Again, a message popped up on my phone, saying Snapchat from Sean. Bro, he gotta go, man. I waited a few minutes before opening it. This one was even creepier. Now the kid was sitting up on his bed, no smile, more of a surprised, angry expression. The text over the image said, why did you remove me? Yeah, I would have blocked this now dude, I man. Now I went as far as to block him, meaning Good. he couldn't snap me anymore. And that was that. I threw my phone on the desk and sighed out of relief. Again? Half an hour later, my phone goes off. Saying Sean added you as a friend, and then Snapchat from Sean. This sucker made another account. He actually made a new account. Bro. I opened the snap and felt my heart drop. It was a picture of my front lawn. Whoa. The text over it, answer me, bitch. How you find the out where I live? I think of where was, he live? How did he find my address? Then I realized. Snapchat made that new map feature that lets you see where your friends bro. are. Bro, oh, I should have known, Somehow, bro. I had the balls to open the window to see outside. It was clear out there. I shut the window and the blinds and started considering calling 911. Uh. It was the sound of taps on the window. I took a deep breath. And with one swift motion, I pulled up the blind and the window at the same time and pulled the kid into my room by his neck. Whoa! I punched him in the face a few Good. times before he was out cold. Good. Now I called 911. By the time they arrived, he was awake, cursing me out, promising he'd be back and kill me. The cops heard it all. I didn't even have to make a case. The kid was an idiot. Luckily, the timing of this worked out well because I just moved a couple days ago out of state. Good. Only thing that worries me, I don't want to have to make a new Snapchat account. But anytime somebody new adds me on the app, I'll never know if it's Whose name is that? secretly that Sean kid again. That's crazy, man. Oh man, it was a freaking weirdo. Allegedly, true keepy thunderstorm. Horror stories animated. <laughs> Allegedly. Yeah, my lighting is off. In the year 2009, I was spending a weekend with my uncle on his ranch when my parents were renovating the new house we had just bought. It was my second night there, a Saturday, and it happened to be during one of the biggest thunderstorms of the year. I'd say there were at least three crashes of thunder and lightning per minute. And we were in the heart of the storm because the thunder would crash not even a second after the lightning would. Dang. I always enjoyed listening to storms while laying in bed. So I stayed up a little later watching TV, just enjoying the ambiance. After the movie I was watching finally ended, I turned off the TV and tried to fall asleep. As I heard the lightning strike from outside, I could have sworn I heard some kind of metallic thud coming from outside at the same time. Metallic I didn't thud? pay it too much mind. 20 seconds later. Oh. I could have sworn I heard it again. A very distinct metallic thud coming from outside to match the timing of the lightning. I really don't mean to make this sound like a cliche horror story, but my uncle really is a kind of creepy guy, and I was never close with him even remotely. So for that reason, I didn't feel right going to wake him up. I just tried to forget about it. Bro, he keeps being delayed. Now like. I was getting concerned. What the hell could that be? Bro was delayed to After the max. the third time, I finally got out of bed and walked over to the window of the guest bedroom. 
The water pouring down on the window made it extra hard to see what was out there in the dark fields. A flash right, there you go. That's a little bit better. lit up the property, but I couldn't see anything. However, once again, the sound of a metal hit accompanied it. The sound was so close now, it sounded like it was coming from the left of the window at a blind spot. Ooh, get away from the window. Something I knew my uncle wouldn't be happy about. It would be a bit messy, but I was going to open the window and peer outside to see if I could see what. Why the would was. you do that? I unhooked the window lock and slid it up, and immediately the wind of the storm blew drops of rain into the room and onto me. I stuck my head out the window and looked to the left, and at that very moment, lightning lit up the property once again. And I could see a person dressed in all black crouched down by the outside basement door with his hand raised in the air. And before the oh. sky went dark, I caught the briefest glimpse of what the sound was coming from. The person was bashing at the basement door lock. I pulled my head in and quietly shut the window, making sure to lock it. I was in a panic. I feared he might have seen or heard me. I ran back to bed and pretended to be asleep, facing away from the window. Lightning crashed once again, but this Is that time the window now? there was no metallic thud. My heart must have dropped as I realized this. I just stayed put in bed for the longest time, hoping whoever was out there would go away. After maybe three more lightning crashes without any thuds accompanying them, I thought it would be safe to go tell my uncle. I turned to face the window and screamed. There was a figure the clear suck as out day the standing window. at the window looking in at me. I screamed as loud as I could and ran straight to my uncle's room. He went outside with his hunting rifle with nothing on but his pajamas, not even socks. Dang. He ran around the entire property yelling like a madman, but didn't find anyone. The next morning we were able to better see the marks on the basement door lock. It was almost bashed open. Maybe three or four more good hits would have done it, according to my uncle. He was proud of me for picking up on it. Luckily I was out of there that same day. My uncle hasn't told us of any incidents since, so I think he's been okay. Not that we talk to him much at all. I'm grateful I stayed up a little later that night watching that movie, because I may have just stopped a robbery, or possibly much worse. Yeah, you sure did. You sure did. How sitting horror stories animated. Have you ever house sat somebody's house before? I never did. A couple weeks ago, my dad came home and pitched me a small job offer. One of his co-workers was going away for a few days and needed somebody he could trust to watch over his house. The reason my dad pitched this to me was because the man's house has a big CCTV system, basically a camera in every room and then an operating desk where all screens could be watched on a big monitor. And I'm a computer science major, so my dad just always assumes that I know how to work anything technological. The man told my dad that he'd pay me $200 for the two days just to watch the house. Whatever that meant. My dad drove me to the house and introduced me to the man, whose name doesn't matter. The man made it seem like he preferred I stay in the upstairs room with the monitors as opposed to roaming the house all day. That was fine with me, though. So when I wasn't eating, I was mostly just sitting in that room with the TV on in the background. And what about my game system? My laptop. Ironically, the thing I was doing the least was keeping an eye on the monitors. Night came. I started wondering where in the house I should sleep since, surprisingly, we hadn't discussed that. So I sat back down at the desk and looked at all the different rooms on the screens to see which rooms had beds or couches. I noticed something I wasn't expecting to notice, though. The back screen door was open downstairs. Really? I didn't remember it being open. Oh. I looked through each and every camera screen in a panic. In the living room, a closet door was open. This one I knew wasn't open earlier. I texted my dad to call the man and ask him if he came back home. Meanwhile, I continued watching the screen. You better stay in that room. <laughs> on the grainy, dark image, a tall person who resembled only a black shadow on the screen stepped out from the closet. I pulled my arms off the desk as I covered my mouth with my hands in shock. As I did this, however, my left elbow pulled some heavy object from the desk onto the floor, creating a big thud. The person mm. in the image very clearly moved their head up to the ceiling as a response to the noise. 
They went for the stairs, walking up very, very slowly, step by step. Meanwhile, I got a text back from my dad saying, No, he's not. I just spoke to him half an hour ago. Why? This turned into I Five Nights at Freddy's 4. I my phone texting my dad to send help that I didn't even pay attention to the monitor. There was a knock at the door. I looked at it and then the screens. The first screen I laid my eyes on was the one showing the person outside the door to the room I was in. When I remembered that door had no lock, the only oh, thing I could think man. of was jump out the window into the bushes below. I ran halfway down the block and then stopped when my dad called me. I had him call his friend and ask him if he was expecting somebody in the house. The man said he had no relatives or friends who had his key or would ever let themselves into his home. So he called the cops and had them review the footage. I got to watch all of it, and it showed everything. From the moment the intruder broke the glass to the backyard door, to the moment I jumped out the window and him running away shortly after. The intruder was never found. The footage was just too dark to identify his face. That's so crazy, man. Hitchhiking horror stories. Yo, I, I will never hitchhike. Three never. months after I turned 16 in 2005, I got my first car, a 99 Toyota Camry. On a warm Saturday night, when my friend Alex invited me over to one of his friend's big parties, I knew I wouldn't be in a condition to drive the Camry home afterward. So we carpooled with Alex's girlfriend, Brianna. We lived in the countryside of Virginia, meaning less big parties. Meaning when there was a big party, it was a huge deal and everyone would go. We lived about 5 to 10 minutes away from this kid's house. I knew where he lived as I was acquainted with him, but not exactly friends. The whole ride there, we took the same two-lane highway type road through the woods, and this kid's house was actually on this road further down. At certain points on this road, there were a few houses on either side, and then it would just go back to being a long, empty highway again. The house was tiny, like a lot of houses around the area, but the party was held outside anyway, since his closest neighbors were relatively far away, and noise wasn't an issue. I'll skip most of the party up until the point that Brianna, who was supposed to be our designated driver, had to suddenly leave for a small family emergency. Alex said it was fine and that we'd find a ride home. Well, fast forward another few hours and another few drinks, and I could barely even walk straight. Uh. I checked my watch, and it was like 2 in the morning. 2 in the morning? I figured morning? it was time to go. I started looking for Alex, but I couldn't find him anywhere. In fact, it seemed like everybody I knew had already left. I could barely even think straight, but I was still furious at the fact that Alex could have actually left without me. See, this is why I don't drink, man. Like, bro, I gotta be on my A game at all times. If you drink, your mind... If you drink or smoke, your mind slows down. Like, there's no benefit to either of those. Like, I gotta stay on I asked my A game. I the party host's phone and dialed Alex's home number. After two tries, I gave up and then realized I shouldn't wake his family up. So, literally not knowing what else to do, That's an L I friend though. stepped out onto the road and began walking back home. I knew this walk would take anywhere from half an hour to an hour in my condition. Maybe after 15 minutes of walking down the road, the slight shine of car headlights on the road was fading in from behind me. Jumping for joy inside, I lifted up my arm and stuck out my thumb. As the car neared, it slowed down and came to a stop right next to me. The man driving the 98 Ford Explorer rolled down the window and asked where you headed. I told him my house was just down the road and beyond a right turn, probably slurring my words beyond comprehension. He chuckled and told me to hop in. I thanked him and joyously hopped into the truck. Damn, bro, look like Superman. I was exhausted, and I remember completely disregarding things the guy was asking me because I was so close to just passing out. And that's what happened. The memories Why would you of pass out? that truck turned to bro, a fog. You already, bro, you asking for it at this point, man. You go to a random stranger's car, and then you fall asleep. Like, right, bro, two red flags already. As I'm sure I passed out. He about to have his way with you, man. You asked for it. The next thing I remember, I woke up still in the moving truck. The guy looked at me and left, but didn't say anything. I looked around and realized the road we were on wasn't familiar. About to get kidnapped. I nervously asked, uh, where are we going? He then said, 
So what were you doing out this late anyway? Uh, answer As my question first. My very straightforward question with another irrelevant question. The sobering reality of the situation hit me. Uh, you can you can let me out anywhere, I told the man. The man responded with a firm no. No, I'm jumping out the like window. Throwing up as he said that. I'm no, jumping right out the I car. I really actually felt like I was going to throw up. I started to gag as I felt more and more nauseous by the second. The man took his eyes off the road to look at me, and that's when I thought of the perfect distraction. I turned in his direction as I continued to gag, and he started to kind of lean away and slow down the car. Look at his face. Thankfully, I drank as much as I did because I finally threw up and made a point of doing it all over the man's lap. The man yelled in frustration and stopped the car, and that's when I took it upon myself to run for my life <laughs> into the woods it's and duck slow. behind a few bushes. The man came following into the woods with a flashlight, and on two separate occasions, he shined the light straight over me without noticing. Eventually, I heard his footsteps walk even further into the woods past me. That was when I ran back to his truck, but unfortunately, he was smart enough to lock it. By some miracle, I saw another car approaching in the distance, and I ran out into the middle of the street, waving my arms like a lunatic. The car tried to avoid me, but I wouldn't let it. They were forced to stop, and I yelled at them to help me before they came back. Once I told them that I was kidnapped by the man who was driving that Ford Explorer, the driver agreed to give me a lift. Not to the police station or anything, but to my house. I made it back safely, where I couldn't thank the driver enough. I immediately woke up my parents and told them. My dad wanted to know if I got his tag number. And then yeah. I felt like punching myself in the face. You should've got that. I failed to get the simplest information from the guy that would've allowed me to actually properly report him. All I knew was that he drove a faded blue 99 Ford Explorer. I made sure to give Alex a piece of my mind, and part of me always held a grudge against him ever since just for abandoning oh, yeah. me at a party without telling me. I haven't seen him in four years now, however, and this was actually the first time I even thought about this incident for almost a year now. As time goes on, even the worst of memories may start to fade. But after writing this to share with the internet, it's once again fresh in my mind. Mm, he was typing it the whole time. That was pretty interesting. Scary 2 Horror Story Animated. I'm 27 years old. I live alone in a rural town in Virginia, about two blocks away from my parents. My parents are both in their 60s, and my mom has become a very worrisome woman in her old age. Sometimes she walks over uninvited and lets herself in, since I had regrettably given her a key, which can get a bit annoying. Yeah, I bet. Like, if I would be out really late on weekends at a bar or with women, I would sometimes come home to my mom sitting in the living room waiting, worried sick. <laughs> what? I know you may just think, oh my god, that's crazy, why not just put your foot down and tell her to stop? Well, because you don't know my mom. It's very hard to describe her, but she's the kind of worrisome, innocent little lady that you just can't bring yourself to go against. And I hate to mention, she also has mild dementia. Mm. Anyway, this was Saturday night. I think it was around 2 in the morning. I was at a nearby club with a group of college friends. Really the only place to hang out in this boring hey, town. Who's her? Like, I want to try to find out who she is. You know what I'm saying? Like, God dang. <laughs> Let me stop. I was getting ready to head home. I said goodbye to all my friends and walked the three blocks it took to get back to my house. I walked up my front stoop in my drunken haze and dug my hand in my pocket for my keys. When I grabbed the doorknob, I realized it was unlocked. My mom was here again. I quietly opened and shut the front door, locking it behind me. I put my keys on the kitchen counter and found a note written in my mom's handwriting saying, you forgot this at our house, next to the box of half-eaten cake my parents didn't want. The cake is not a lie? I didn't see my mom anywhere, so I assumed she must have gone upstairs to sleep in the guest bed until I got back, which is something she would commonly do as well. Then I heard footsteps upstairs, confirming it, and that's uh. when I sighed once again. 27 years old, almost 3 in the morning, and she still has to wait up and treat me like a child. That's crazy. I ran upstairs to check the guest bed, empty, along with all the bathrooms. I was afraid mom was having one of her episodes due to her condition, so I ran to the phone to call my dad. After four rings, my dad picked up in a groggy voice, asking what the hell is the matter. After I told him that I heard mom wandering around upstairs in my house, there was a short pause and then he said, That's not possible, she's sleeping right next to me. 
What? My mouth fell open as I turned my head to face Look the how dark that room is. Look and how dark that guy barely, by the light provided by the kitchen, I could see a head peering around from the corner at the top of the stairs, looking down at me. I screamed into the phone That's as a I ran creature. out the front door and down the street to my parents' house, explaining to my father on the way. About halfway there, my dad told me, All right, I'm going to call the cops, and hung up. I made it to my parents' house, where my mom was already waiting at the door, worried sick. My mom explained that she did come over to clean my kitchen a little bit and to bring over the cake they didn't want. Two police cars pulled up in front of my parents' house, where they escorted me and my dad down the street to my house. One officer stayed outside with us, while two others went inside to investigate. It felt like 15 minutes before they came back outside and said it was clear. They checked the crawl space, the attic, everything. There was really nothing for me to report other than the door was left unlocked and I saw the outline of a head upstairs before I ran for it. Still, I didn't feel safe sleeping in there that night, so I went back to my parents' house. Me and my dad are certain that my mom simply forgot to lock the door when she left, as her memory has been getting worse over the past few months. My dad has been stopping her from coming over alone from now on, which makes me both sad but also relieved. Some nights, I still get paranoid that whoever was in my house that night never left. Yeah, I feel like they're still, still in there. hiding in here somewhere. <laughs> it's crazy, man. Even if I, um... If I was in a situation after I told the police that somebody broke in my house and they say it's clear, I'm still not living there. I'm moving. Like, I don't care. Like, they probably found a space that nobody can find them. And they're still probably there right now. Yeah, with that being said, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Please smack the like button, subscribe today to join the AA, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.